Okay, so this is the iPhone 16 Pro Max. I got the Max version. It's actually my first iPhone Max. It's uh, The screen is quite big. And I got it on launch day, and I've been playing around with it for about two weeks now. And I wanted to share some thoughts about it. Um, I've been studying <laughs> other YouTubers and their analysis and their opinions and stuff like that. So this is a great smartphone, okay? The iPhone 16 Pro Max is a great smartphone. I want to start off with that um, because I noticed that there is this trend now to just bash on the latest iPhone from very popular YouTubers, not going to mention any names. Uh, it seems like everybody is disappointed uh, for a number of reasons. And I think, personally, I think these are just very bored YouTubers uh, they're so used to getting the latest and greatest and these incredible features and gimmicks on the latest smartphones that they're just bored. So they get very upset when something that's supposed to come to the iPhone hasn't shown up yet. So, for example, Apple Intelligence. Every tech YouTuber is complaining about this, that the new iPhone 16 did not get Apple Intelligence from start. Even though it's like a very small delay. I mean, most people in America will get it in October. So what's the big deal, you know? Um, when it comes to the rest of the world, like the EU, where I live, we're going to have to wait um, on probably until next year. But honestly, I don't care so much about Apple intelligence. Yes, it's very cool and all of that. But honestly... I already have conversations with ChatGPT. I already use text to video, text to photo on um, specific apps on my computer. Uh, so it's really not a big deal, but it will be fun, but it feels like that you have something extra to look forward to. So I still think that even if Apple intelligence never comes, this is a great upgrade. So I'm coming from the iPhone 14 Pro, and even for me, there was a it was a big performance boost in so many different ways. Now, if we're talking about pure CPU power, I don't game on my iPhone, so I can't really talk about that. But a couple of things that are very interesting to me is that uh, USB-C port, finally, um, a lot of people will be happy to get that on their iPhone if they upgrade from, you know, 14 or older. Um, I love the ProRes recording features. Uh, I'm someone who makes content on YouTube and I use my smartphone to do a lot of B-roll and I've been playing around so much with the ProRes and it's just so good. It's so nice to play around with. The 4K 120 FPS. Beautiful. Finally. I'm so happy about it. Some people complain that the iPhone 16 Pro Max did not get 8K, that Apple is taking their time to release something that is already on Android. So I have a couple of Android devices here at home where I can already test out 8K on a smartphone. And I have to tell you that for most cases, the 8K absolutely sucks on most Android devices for a couple of reasons. Like, you can't, uh, there's usually corruption in the files because it's so much data. Uh, the image quality does not look much better than 4K. And so I feel like it, it's not real 8K that we're seeing on a lot of Android devices, okay? That's just my personal opinion from the Android devices I've tested out. The OnePlus, the Xiaomi's, and um, I haven't tested the Samsung, but... OnePlus and Xiaomi, they cannot do 8K. They just can't do it, you know, for different reasons. But we're not going to go into that. I think that when Apple finally does release 8K on the iPhone 17 or 18 or whatever you're going to call it, it's going to be top notch. Now, the 4K 120, I also wanted to mention, the one thing that did annoy me is that it did not get, we did not get it on the ultra wide or the tele x that's a bit of a shame that would have been really really nice but they do they do at least give you the option of a 2x zoom you're using the main camera which is honestly the best one and i have some thoughts about ultra wide so just bear with me but the thing is that if they put the 4k 120 fps on the ultra wide or the telephone 
tele lens, it just probably would not look as good as it does right now. So I'm someone who's like, would have been cool if they had it, but I'm happy to wait if it means we get better image quality. Now let's talk about the ultra wide camera. Now we finally get matching 48 megapixels, just like on the main sensor. And this is probably my personal biggest disappointment. I have to say, I don't think that the ultra wide camera is very good at taking photos. Uh, or scratch that. It actually takes good photos, but the 48 megapixels, they really don't do that much more details than the regular 12 megapixels that you get out of it. So I'm a bit disappointed with the 48 megapixel ultra wide, but the main camera, beautiful. Now, if we're talking about 4K recording, great image quality, and especially if you're shooting in ProRes log, my goodness, that 10 bit glory, the things that you can do with that as a professional content creator here on YouTube, most people will probably not use it. They will skip it. Very, very cool. Um, but for someone like me, it is actually cool. Okay. That made no sense. Anyway, <laughs> um, one other feature that's a bit wonky. I think this is an iOS 18 thing. I am hoping they will fix it with future updates is that you can record directly to a SSD drive or a USB thumbnail, I suppose. Thumbnail, no, thumb drive, thumb drive. <laughs> I can't talk today, I'm sorry. This is obviously not scripted. Okay, some bugs over there, like um, if you do not have the right cable, you will not get uh, 4K 60. And, and sometimes it, you get these warnings that it's not fast enough. And I can assure you that I have very fast SSDs, so it's kind of weird. Uh, and sometimes I have to restart the entire phone because it goes into this mode, say that there is not enough space on my SSD, which again, there is, but for some reason the iPhone doesn't see it. So there are a couple of wonky bugs there, but not a big deal. I still have no intentions of, you know, walking around with, you know, an SSD drive connected to it. Now I love this big screen. Uh, bezel to bezel, the bezels are almost invisible this time. Really like it. I got the space gray titanium black edition. I really like it. Now I do also want to talk about, where is it? There it is. The camera control button. I'm going to call it a button because it's a button. <laughs> Every YouTuber talks about the fact that Apple doesn't call this a button, but it is, it most certainly is. Okay. This is also a feature that a lot of YouTubers have been complaining about, basically saying that the camera control doesn't really add much. And I will say that it actually does add a lot, but not to the extent that I think that Apple wants. So for example, you, you, you get this feature where I'm going to show you where you can, um, like scroll through the menus and do these different things. You can zoom in and out and change different settings. That is pointless. Apple should just get rid of that. Nobody's ever going to use that. But one thing I do like is that when I want to do a selfie and I, and I know that I can just hit it on this button and do a selfie like this and feel that vibration and you know that you got the shot. That is worth a lot to me personally. So I, for one, am probably the only YouTuber here who actually likes the camera control, control button. That's just me, I guess. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Battery life is amazing, but I have to remind you that I have not used iPhone Max phones before. This is my first one, but battery life is just incredible. Honestly, like I could not kill this in a day, even if I tried and I've been playing around with it a lot. Um, iOS 18, very cool. I use a kind of a dark mode style on it and I like it. I like iOS 18. I usually don't like newer versions of iOS. I think sometimes they do things for the worst. Like for example, the app jar that's pointless and you can't remove it. You, you always have to have it here. I don't like that. 
Um, what else? Overall, I think that the experience of the iPhone is something that Apple considers that they should just add features to it, improve certain features, not so much revolutionize everything, which I think that, you know, back in the day when we had the original iPhone or iPhone 4 with the Retina display and the HD camera, we were really looking at revolutionary things. But now it's like, you know, smartphones are so incredibly good that doing too much would almost certainly hurt the devices. This is the peak of smartphones. The, the next logical step is obviously Apple intelligence. But honestly, I would rather that they do it right than just release something terrible. You know, there are some AI devices that I will not mention that have been released in the last six months that are just terrible. Um, <clears throat> oh, I, I do want to say something because I'm coming from an iPhone 14 Pro. Um, I do miss the mute switch. Now, there is a button and I'm someone who uses this quite frequently, the switch, I mean. I know that most people probably don't, but I'm someone who does. I switch between, depending on the situation I'm in, I switch off on and off all the time. This button is fine, <laughs> but I just feel I would have preferred to keep the mute switch uh, as it was. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else to say. Um, I think that the image quality coming out of this thing, because you can tell that the cameras are what matters the most to me. The image quality on the selfie camera, uh, on the back, it's so good. Even the tele uh, lens is really good. 5X, guys, 5X. And I've also tried to take like 25X photos with a lot of digital, digital zoom and AI functionality, I suppose. Images look pretty cool, you know? Even the digital zoom is pretty cool. And uh, obviously, no, I did. I wasn't paid by Apple to say that. I just really like the iPhone 16 Pro Max. It's a very good device this year. Um, I really don't have any major complaints. Battery is good, cameras are good, it's faster, it's got a nice big screen. It's good, it's good. If there is one thing I would tell Apple, please don't do this, it's probably the regular iPhone 16s uh, and 16 Plus, like put in a high refresh rate on those things. It's just ridiculous that people who cannot afford Pro models have to sell for 60 Hertz. Now I'm someone who on this channel have said that I don't care about high refresh rate, but after using the iPhone 14 Pro for about two years, I cannot go back to 60 Hertz. It's crazy, but I love the fluidity of high refresh rate screens. So in my book, it's a must. Okay, that's all I have for today. Hope you enjoyed this so-called review and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye.